Hello and welcome to polyplane.com. Today we're going to be talking about dimensioning. Now there's a couple of purposes you might have for needing to pull dimension off an object. The two main types of purposes that I find are A, you're either taking notes or B, you're sending something off to be manufactured. Those are usually the the two reasons why you would want to pull dimensions off of something. Rhino has a, a nice set of dimensioning tools built into it and this is because Rhino is a nice hybrid program between doing more conceptual modeling and then getting something ready to actually be produced. So it's kind of adopted a nice set of tools for you know pulling dimensions off of stuff. We're going to pull a few dimensions off of uh, this bracket. Uh, some of you might recognize this from the uh, object selection video. And I th think it's kind of a good model to use to just kind of go over some of the more basic, basic tools for dimensioning. So what I do is, let me close this back out. Up here in the top of Rhino, there's your menu bar here. There's a little icon and this is your linear dimension icon. If you were to just click that, you can, um, you know, pick a couple of points and pull pull out a uh, dimension. Now this dimension, 1.5, doesn't really tell you what it is. In order for you to understand what this number means, you have to know what the units are of your document. So in this case, my document is actually set to inches. If I were to put this to millimeters, let's change our units in this document from inches over to millimeters and click OK. And it's going to ask me if I want to scale this and I'm going to click no and what that's going to do is actually now this 1.5 represents 1.5 millimeters so if I were to jump back in here to my units and go back to inches click OK and I'll say no again now this 1.5 represents inches so it's pretty straightforward now if I actually were to change it let's go do this one more time back to millimeters and click yes now this is no longer 1.5 millimeters that's 38.1 millimeters, which is 1.5 inches. So that means that the model didn't change, just the units did. So you can, and what's cool about this is you can then, you know, change change what's actually being shown for your uh, dimension here. Now the other cool thing, I'm going to jump back into inches here. Click OK, and yes. So now it's back to its 1.5. And then I'm going to change the actual dimensions here. So that number is actually really big. So I'm just going to uh, change this to like 0.1. And what that does is it's going to scale down the dimensions a little bit to make them a little more manageable. So yeah, you can scale your dimension callouts here to fit the, the scale of your document. Now I'm working on dimensioning off of the actual 3D model. So if I look at this in the perspective view, you can see these dimension callouts are uh, just kind of floating out in space now. A lot of people would say that's a big no-no, but when I'm on a conference, you know, just trying to take quick notes, this works totally fine as long as you're making sure that you're you're not, you know, doing something where you're snapping like arbitrarily to something and like say from there to there. And it's like that that number really doesn't mean anything. Well, I guess it does technically. It means from that point to that point, but you don't really know what that point in 3D really represents until you look at it. So, you you want to make sure that you're you're doing all of your dimensions on either like a front top or right view to get the most accurate measurements just to quickly go through these dimension tools you've got your linear dimensions which means i can select this and i can go this way i can go this way i can pull a point and i can choose to go from this way or i could take this tool and go like this or I could go like this. What's cool about it is like I can select on an angle and this is handy for if you only have snaps in those two places you'd be able to pull a point off in that direction or you could pull it up this direction depending on what you're intending. And then the next two icons over just mean you're either going to go just with horizontal dimensions or you're going to go with vertical dimensions over here. And then you can get into like arbitrary and rotated uh, dimensions. So say you need an angle. Let's use this line right here, here to here. So now I can pull off a dimension on an angle, which is very useful. Uh, and then you get into say your, your angle tool. That's this next icon in the next row down. Um, and there's, a, there's a few more. I'll show you the radius and the, um, diameter measuring. Uh, so there's the radius and that'll just pull a radius off of a curve or you could use diameter and it, it marks the center of where your radius is. So these are these are great for uh, 
you know, if you needed to send something to an engineer, uh, this is a great way to quickly mark up your document. I often just use this for note taking. Say I need to temporarily untrim a surface. Well, I can now do that. And then the mark of A, where that diameter starts, A, where the center of that radius is, and then B, what the, uh, what the diameter of that hole is. So I can just extrude out um, a cylinder and then uh, subtract that away from the main body and get my hole back. And I'll know that it's the same diameter that I had because I could, I could either write it in numerically or I could just use the curve like I did. So anyway, those are a few of the dimensioning tools that you can use and what you can use them for. The other thing is for certain measurements, you can actually just type in what you want. So say I want the length of something. I can just select my curve. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be a curved line as long as it's joined. I'm going to select this edge and hit enter. And then you can see up here, it's 1.549 inches. Your dimension display precision is to the second decimal. You can increase this to like the 10th, I think. But it gives you a very accurate length of that line or that curve. And then the same thing, you can uh, type in your radius, select a curve, we'll say on here, and again, it's telling me what the radius is of that curve, and it's matching the dimension. So those are a couple of the uh, ways that you can do dimensioning within Rhino. And these tools translate over to a, an abundance of other uh, programs, such as SolidWorks and uh, AutoCAD and so forth. The other cool thing is, say I select everything in the scene, and uh, I, I come up and I scale the actual dimension, let's say I want this now to be two. It just changed the dimension to two and updated all of my other dimensions within the scene. Uh, so that's another really big benefit to using tools that are more engineering based. You're gonna get live updates and it's all just, it's just a little more fluid. So I just wanted to show you guys that today and uh, Hopefully you found some use for it. Also, I want to take a quick, quick moment to thank everybody uh, for coming to the Novich sem Seminar. Apologies for that uh, mistake that we had going on there. I don't know what the heck was going on. That's the issue with fillet sometimes, and I'm actually going to be talking more about fillets next week, so we can kind of explore that. I'll bring the, the base from that webinar in. And don't forget, there's only a couple weeks left for the for the last monthly modeling challenge that I posed. We got a few entries here already. That's some crazy funky lamp. <laughs> so if, if you see, you must be registered and logged in to upload an image. Uh, just go to resources, forum, and then uh, register. And then you can sign up here and then you can submit ideas and stuff. There's only two weeks left. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what everybody comes up with. And then the following week is the voting. So uh, hurry up and get on there. I'd love to have some some more submissions and we'll uh, we'll pick a winner soon so all right guys thanks so much for watching have a great day